Hello, dear listeners and judges. My name is Lee Love. Our team, AAA, represents Novosibirsk State University. Together with my teammates Anastasia and Daria, we will analyze the case of Nintendo as a brand that has been uniting people of different ages from all over the world. 6,717 employees all over the world. Microsoft, Sony, Sega is the main competitors. 130 years has been holding a significant share in the gaming market. It's all about Nintendo, the company which is admired with its resilience. Nintendo, being at the market for more than 100 years, has passed a long way in order to reach worldwide fame. Games production industry is at the forefront of the process progress. On the one hand, due to the prompt development of the industry, permanent appearance of new companies, products, and technologies seems logical. On the other hand, Nintendo Company is a leader within games production industry during 130 years, not only in Japan, but all over the world. How does it work? Our case study will help to find out answers for this question, as well as for many others. First of all, we are going to discuss the significance of this case. Then, we will move on to the description of external and internal factors affecting the functioning of Nintendo. Afterwards, we will talk about turning points in its history. Later, we will emphasize success factors and consider recommendations which might help the company to overcome current challenges. We will include our presentation with the most important lessons following from the analysis of the company's history and the results of the decisions made by its management. This case will help business leaders as well as young people or students to comprehend Asian market peculiarities, in particular Japanese ones, and key success factors of one of the most prosperous Japanese companies. Let's now consider the conditions under which Nintendo was built and still operates. So I'll pass it on to Anastasia. Uh, thank you, Leila. Japanese culture differs from American or European one. The most Japanese consider themselves as the core of the middle class and determinize the, the similarity of the consumer taste. The Japanese are focused on a group behavior. New products as, and services either spread very quickly or rejected by everyone. Moreover, the Japanese always prefer to pay for a well-known brand. Also, consumers consider the um, production, appearance, and packaging have a great importance for any goods. In Japan, companies compete for the market share, but not for profit, since it's important for them to attract as many people as possible. New form of leisure activity and large variety of entertainment items appear due to the scientific progress and acceleration of economic growth. The major players of the global gaming industry market are the USA, Europe, and Japan. Globalization trends have led to the fact that at present, the world entertainment industry is represented not just by individual establishments, but by entire mega complexes. Also characteristic of the entertainment industry is the integration into the business direction, namely the integration of leisure and retail. Now let's talk about current position of Nintendo in the gaming market. Nintendo company is Japanese multinational video game production company. It's one of the most um, pros uh, prosperous company at Japanese market. Research, development, production, and distribution of entertainment products, mainly video games, software, hardware, and card games, is the main concept of Nintendo company. During its um, existence, Nintendo has sold more than 5 billion copies of video games and more than 800 million gaming devices all over the world. In 2020, it occupied 87% of the gaming console market in Japan and about 50% software market. How did Nintendo become a world-known company? How did it go from a small company producing playing cards into the world leader? The history of Nintendo began in 1889, when entrepreneur Osajara Yamauchi started Japanese Hanafuda playing cards producing in Kyoto, Japan. After 19 years, the company has opened many branches in different countries of the world. Nintendo products cover a wide range of users, from children to the elderly. The target audience of its consoles is young men from 20 to 30 years old. Now let's dive deep into considering three financial reports of the company, which totally cover the company's activity. Those are income statement, balance sheet, and cash flow. These reports show the financial condition of the company 
its income and expenses. According to the income statement, the company's net profit has increased. The total value of all uh, its assets has the same trend. According to the cash flow report, the company has a positive free cash flow. It means that Nintendo is growing up. The most important indicators are increasing. Let's now consider how Nintendo transfers difficult difficulties into opportunities. Let's first have a look how Nintendo has become a company that it has today. Today we are going to highlight three main uh, turning points. The first one called a failure that turned into success and it concerns Famicom. In 1983, Nintendo company produced its first real game console, Family Computer. The first Famicom console was quickly sold, but the console was characterized as unreliable, prone to failures and programming errors by the console. After studying the problem, cartridges turned out to cause of complete system shutdown. The managers representing for Famicom suggested to change the console to a new one if failure occurs, but he was ordered to recall all devices from the store shelves. The suggestion turned out to be a key and unexpected decision. At first sight, it looked like Nintendo was losing millions by missing a good sales season. But as it turns out later, buyers treated this as a shortage of devices. As a result, huge crease of pre-orders were lined up. And the second turning point is GameCube console. GameCube is a game console that was released in Japan in 2001. However, Nintendo incorrectly approached its strategy and design that finally occupied only the short place in the console wars that was the first time during its existence. Late in UV, console sales started. The excitement around these products was very strong and huge quiz were lined up. However, there were not enough consoles for everyone due to the fact that the previous GameCube console was unsuccessful. The badge of Wii console turned out to be small. The demand for consoles for, uh, exceeded the supply. As a result, an artificial storage of goods were created. Fans um, tracked all deliveries and looked for any opportunities to get a new product, charging others with the excitement of searching for consoles and thus creating an ongoing demand. The third factor that we want to mention concerns CDS console. Initially, the 3DS console was announced on March 23, 2010. When the 3DS was launched, it had only a few games for children, and none of them were particularly interesting. Users was not familiar with the games, so the console, which had a high cost, was not in demand. Buyers didn't want to overpay for unknown products because of the lack of games. Soon, Nintendo realized that sales of consoles were not going there for the company reduced the price and added many new and fun games to the library, such as Super Mario. The addition of well-loved and well-known games was a key factor that then contributed to the growth of sales. At first, it was Mario Universe, then it was supplemented by Pokemon. In addition to integration of everyone's favorite games into new devices, the company also successfully applies a business diversification strategy. So it's not only engaged in the release of console, but also engaged in the production of products related to Super Mario and Pokemon. Now I will pass it on Dario to discuss some success factors of the Nintendo company. Thanks, Anastasia. The main success factors of the company are as follows. The first one is their product strategy. Nintendo took a special approach. They settled on a deep preliminary analysis of the market and potential consumers of products. They by finding out exactly how buyers want to play. As a result, in addition to the traditionally more active groups of gamers, the company was able to attract families and even the elderly to the game. The work of management aimed at analyzing consumers is a key in the development strategy. Thus, Nintendo has come up with a switch console that can be used both in the TV and in portable mode. The company's goal was to attract both Eastern gamers who are more used to playing with friends and Western players who prefer to play alone. The new console combines the advantages of both portable systems and familiar consoles. The logical development of the idea of the Nintendo Wii U console is to give the controller ability to play games while being away from the console itself. And, and uh, this is what a modern game requires. Besides, the company produces goods prior to the main holidays and before competitors releases. The second success factor is product diversification, which attracts consumers and creates their loyalty. 
So if Nintendo company suffer losses in one industry, it will be able to compensate them from the other industries. The third success factor is logistic and focusing on local markets. The company's management understands that Japanese market culture and consumers are significantly different from European and American ones. The company has branches all over the world with local employees who connect Nintendo with local consumers, not only by selling, but also by producing products. Thus, the company supports a single continuous development of the company in all parts of the world. Uh, Nintendo performs a covert marketing strategy. The company strategy is to produce items designed for those who co constantly play and those who have never played as well. Nintendo hosts many family events and festivals, creates theme parks uh, that attract a large number of visitors. Celebrities are often involved in the advertising campaign, which form trusts. Besides, their collaboration with various brands around the world. Simple and intuitive items interface production uh, variety and proper advertising policy allowed Nintendo company to attract different ages audience all over the world. Now let's take a look on some of the challenges. The company doesn't have permanent selling growth or revenue during a year and it causes some instability within continuous operation of the company. The company's position is to gain market shares and profit. It was caused because of Japanese market peculiarities in order to gain a foothold at the Japanese market. Companies should build long-term relationships with consumers. However, other rules should be applied to the international market. The strength of the trend plays an important role in the international market. Thus, the company should focus not only on long-term relationships with consumers, but also pay attention to trends that can attract a new audience for a while. As a result, the company has the opportunity to make a big profit and for loyalty to its products among a new audience. For this, Nintendo company can develop AR and VR technologies, start working with blockchain and NFT services. The second challenge of Nintendo is its competitors. There are periods when competitors' items are more in de uh, demand. Uh, there is also a trend that in Western countries where consumers are not so committed to a particular brand, they may switch to uh, competitors' products. Let's have a look at our recommendations. Nintendo company is able to establish partner relationships with competitors. What is more, Nintendo may cooperate with local companies trusted by the Japanese. Besides, in order to maintain its share both uh, at Japanese at, uh, and at the world market, the company needs to come up with extraordinary and innovative solutions. Uh, now let's move on uh, to the conclusion. I will pass it on to Leila. Thanks, Daria. Now let's sum up all the discussed below and dive deep into the most important lessons. Each gamer or person who is interested of entertainment field even a little knows Nintendo. This company has proved itself as a key player at the gaming market. From each chapter discussed earlier, the main provisions can be distinguished. We also highlighted main lessons following from the analysis of the Nintendo case. Anyways, it is very important to build long-term relationships with consumers. Marketing strategy of the company is being de developed for the existing target audience, as well as for potential one. Nintendo also has a large number of branches. It allows to concentrate at local markets, attracting with local staff and working with local developers and designers in order to get as close as possible to consumers from different countries. Nintendo doesn't avoid difficulties, but transforms them into opportunities to grow. There are also many opportunities for companies in the gaming market. The growth of human well-being and increasement of the number of gamers is a favorable environment for the company. In this regard, we can give some recommendations to companies that would like to enter the Japanese gaming market. The main recommendation to be given to companies is to divide markets. Besides, Japanese consumers trust domestic manufacturers. A company might start cooperating with Japanese companies or in order to make mergers or to produce joint products. Another recommendation is to keep in touch with consumers. A company may organize events or platforms where gamers could communicate with each other and discuss goods. It will help company to identify its weaknesses and improve its products. It is also important to be innovators. These measures can make additional advantages for the company among competitors. Of course, recommendations can be extrapolated to the markets of different industries or countries. We were glad to analyze the case of such an interesting company as Nintendo. 
Thank you very much for your time.